Okay, don't panic. We're going to keep it basic. Welcome to SETI Astro. I think a lot of people get intimidated when they first look at way to batch pre-processing. And this is how you stack uh, your images in PixInsight. There's also fast batch pre-processing uh, that we can cover in a, in a different video. But I think most of us will, will come across this and there's literally enough options in here where people like Adam Block have spent hour long tutorials going through the different things and, and multiple videos of it. But that's not what this video is today. Today, we're just going to get the basics in here, clear up some misconceptions and rumors that I've seen floating around for whatever reason, and just uh, just get your master lights so you can start uh, so you can start processing. Now this is going to be one of those times where a little organization is going to go a long ways. Uh, so I have a, a dedicated folder uh, where I have various subfolders, right? I have a dedicated one for flats, for darks, uh, all my lights get put in a different one too. And then uh, I have a separate folder for master flats and darks, but we'll, we'll talk about those in a sec. You're going to want dedicated folders for your PixInsight outputs, uh, right? Because you you save to some folder uh, out of WBBP, and you don't want all this stuff just smushed in um, just one giant folder. It, it'll be it'll become a nightmare. So a, a little bit here is going to go a long ways. So let's go ahead and hop right into WBBP. Again, we're going to keep it basic here. Uh, right off the bat, the first thing you should do, there's an output directory down in the lower right. Click the little folder. This is where you're going to want to set uh, your output folder to. So I got a little pix output video uh, folder here. You could even right click and make a new folder at this point if you want to. Just make sure you're uh, selecting a, a proper output. Then you're going to have some panes where you could dump in your bias, darks, flats, and lights. I don't know where this rumor came from or, or whatever uh but i've heard a couple different times now that you got to process uh either all your your different channels separately or um nights separately I, I don't know where this came from but you don't have to uh and, and we'll show that here really quick bias if you have a cmos camera don't even worry about bias frames darks put all your darks in here your dark for your uh, flats, your darks for your lights. And in my case, I took two seconds, I got 180 second and 900 second darks and just put them all in there. Uh, don't worry about any settings over here right now. And then for flats, be sure you load up your flats. For me, I, I have a, a whole bunch of flats here. You only need one set of flats per filter. Um, and you only need one set of darks per exposure time. So you don't need like, if you're, if you're taking one minute flats and one minute exposure, you don't need separate one minute darks. That, that doesn't make any sense either. And so with all the flats, dump them all in there in, in one go. It's going to organize them by filter type, by exposure length. Um, and it, it, it's going to handle them all. Again, for the integration here you don't, you don't need to change anything for your flats for lights i like putting in you know all, all my lights for a target in in one go um there's really no need to separate nights unless you changed uh i don't even know why you separate in, in unless you had to reshoot flats or something in the middle of it um because something in your image train chain rotate it or a new dust moat showed up and you had to retake flats. There's no reason to separate your nights at all. Um, so like in this case, my LBN 603, I shot over many, many, many nights. Um, so I'm just gonna, I typed in LBN 603 in the search there. It, you know, finds all the ones with that label. If you click in here and then hit control A, it's gonna highlight them all. And I'm gonna just say open. And it's gonna go ahead and put all the lights in here. And I have, a bunch 62 hydrogen 115 blue 240 green 253 red 
And then uh, quickly over here, again, we're gonna keep it basic, some tips. Image registration, click registration parameters. Be sure you check distortion correction. That's going to allow um, the alignment to be a lot better when it registers them all, right? Because it's gonna use thin splines to, to ensure that they all fit together well. Otherwise you may have misaligned stars, especially across meridian flips. Uh, your filters themselves may have slightly different refractive indices. So keep distortion correction on. Also for image integration, the initial settings that they have in PixInsight is fine but I do like having high scale rejection turned on. It helps with satellite trails. Also ESD significance is pretty um, conservative. So uh, I always put mine to 0.15. You could change it. it it's defaulted to uh, 0 0.05. We won't go into what all that means right now. Same with the Sigma low and high. I like Sigma high of 2.2 roughly and um, a sigma low of four. Again, it's uh, up to you. We we could spend almost an hour just talking about all this stuff. So that's that's my settings. I like ESD significance of 0.15, sigma high of 2.17. I keep the large scale rejection on, and uh, I just left those at two. For calibration, now here's where it's going to make sure everything kind of gets shifted around to, to where everything belongs. You could see that you know, I, I have good amount of green checks. There's no bias for any of these. I don't have optimized dark. And all the green checks mean is that um, everything is kind of flowed right. If you click on like blue, it's showing now that it's gonna use the blue filters. It's 180 second exposure. So it's gonna use the 180 second darks. If I go ahead and click on the blue up here, in the blue flat, these were two second exposures, it's gonna make sure it's using the two second dark. If your darks don't match in exposure time, you might have like a little yellow box that'll give you some kind of warning saying, hey, the darks don't match. Uh, we're gonna use whatever dark. Um, and you could manually change, you know, which one is actually pointing to, but if your labels are good and your exposure times all match, you won't have any problems. Another issue people run into is binning. If you did like a, a bin two and you didn't take any bin two flats, you're gonna run into problems. It won't be able to flat calibrate it. So if you do take different bin lights, you need the appropriate bin flats and darks as well. Now this is a time where you probably uh, want to set a reference image. Most of the time auto is fine. If you have a specific image you want to use as your reference image, you can go ahead and change that. Otherwise just leave it at auto. Now it's going to go ahead and stack all the flats and calibrate them to all the flat darks. It's going to take all the lights, do the dark subtraction, do the flat division, and it's it's, it's going to handle everything. It's all going to be referenced to that one reference image that it chooses. Um, some other things, it's great now. They actually have an automatic pedestal setting. Perfect. No need to touch that. And then cosmetic correction. This is still one uh, we may talk about later. For now, beginner's course, don't worry about it. Let's just keep moving on. So I want to say... Uh, WBPP is really powerful. You don't need to try to dumb down what you're throwing into this thing. Uh, you could even have lights from different focal lengths or different telescopes, and it's going to try to make everything reference whatever reference frame it chose here. Or if you chose a particular reference frame, it's going to try to register everything to that particular um, reference frame. So, you know, don't, don't think you're, you have to limit yourself. Let WPPP take care of all those different parameters. Just put it all in. Post calibration. This is if you want to drizzle your items. 
um, and and you need over 16 exposures to really get a start getting a good drizzle. I recommend drizzling. Um, scale of two is fine. For keeping a basic, 0.9 is fine. 0.8 really is actually uh, is going to be better. Drizzling is going to take a long time though. So I'm just going to give you a word of caution here. If you have 240 frames, it's going to take a long time to drizzle all those, right? So um, just take that into consideration. Also, be sure you use this scroll bar down here to see what is and isn't drizzled. Uh, just because you clicked enable, it doesn't actually apply them to all of them. You have to either click apply to all groups and then it's going to show them. Or you can go through and, you know, kind of set them up individually but be sure you actually scrolled over to look at it otherwise you're going to end up just drizzling one and you won't know why the other ones didn't work and then pipeline here again this is just going to show you everything it's going to do um all the calibrations you know it's just the whole the whole walkthrough of what's happening these active steps are the same active steps from your light tab so it's just kind of a last check, last second check what's going on with it. But this is it. Once you have everything just kind of dumped into WBPP, just run it. And it's it's gonna it's gonna do it all. And it may take a little bit of time, depending on how fast your computer is and how much or how many frames you've actually taken. Um so I'll be back when this is done. All right, when it's done, it's gonna give you a big summary of everything it did, including how many it was able to measure, how many it couldn't. Um, it goes through a bad frame rejection already. So in this case, it, it called uh, just about 70 uh, frames. And then even in like local normalization, it'll tell you if it couldn't uh, normalize any of them and that's just to make sure that at the stacking process all the brightness levels and stuff across each image is the same uh, to, to enhance the uh, integration a lot better and then at the very end if you had auto crop selected which we did it'll uh, crop them so you shouldn't have much if any stacking artifacts around the around the edges and when you uh, close that There'll be a really big log here. It actually saves this log. You don't need to save this. You can just click done. And then it just takes you back to the WBPP screen. And uh, we just exit out of that because what I want to show you guys is the structure that it creates in the output folder. So you better understand what you're trying to find in there. Uh, this is new. It just asks you if you want to purge the cache that it's keeping. If you say yes, uh, it won't store the stuff that you just did in WPPP. I always say no, so that way when I open it next time, all those, all those files and settings and stuff will still be in there. Now let's look in the output folder that it created. So in here, depending on what settings you had, you're absolutely going to have a calibrated folder. If you had a template for cosmetic correction, you may also have a cosmetized folder. And in the cosmetic or in the calibration folder, it's going to have all your calibrated files. Then we did a bunch of flats. We had our lights in there. In the registered section, this is going to be all the after it got done registering them or all aligning them to the reference frame. All the files in here will be the alignments to those reference frames. There's also things like drizzle file data and stuff in there. So when you do go ahead and, and drizzle it, um, it uses files in there. And then in the master folder, here's where all your actual masters are. And you can see there's, there's actually quite a lot. The one starting with LN, that's used in the local normalization process. These are not your master lights. I've seen many times uh, trying to work with people that they've sent me these files or we've been going through stuff and it's it's these files. These are not your master lights. These are all used for the local normalization. Also in here we had darks and flats. So now we have flat darks and flat 
correction, we have master flats and master darks. What's great about that is I love just pulling these files out and sticking them in their own master flats and darks folder. So that way you could use them over and over and over again instead of having to put in all your flats and darks. Flats should be good for months as long as nothing happens in your imaging train. Um, if you're manually like swapping filters in and out, then you may have to, to look at that. But as long as the dust motes didn't change or you didn't like rotate your camera differently to your actual filters, your flats shouldn't, shouldn't be changing here. And then your darks last even longer. You could probably go a whole year without reshooting any darks. So that's why I love just having my own um, master flats and darks folder. And then finally, we get down into your actual master lights. They'll say master light in the front. You may even have more if you turn down drizzling, right? You'll have your normal masters. Then you're going to have a set of drizzled masters as well. It saves the original and the auto cropped. So if I was going to go ahead and start processing now, I would look at these four. These are the auto cropped master lights. These are the files you, you're wanting to use when you're actually looking for what files do I even use to, to see what the output was. It's these ones. With that, let's just go ahead and I, I want to open up one of the auto crops and the, uh, the original to show you what is actually saved with WBPP in the master files. So in the auto crop, it's going to give you a crop mask that it used to just show you how much of the area was actually cropped. And then you'll have your image, which is the, the auto cropped one. And then on the non auto cropped, you're going to have your high rejection map. And this is, uh, if you like do a, a screen transfer function on this, this will probably show you all the satellite trails it found. Uh, what's interesting here is if you have like a short kind of bright set of pixels in a line that could be an asteroid or something in your images. So um, be, be sure to dig into some of those. The dark rejection, that's probably just going to look like noise. So no worries there. If you see something major in here, that's cause for concern. And then as always, you have your, um, your master light itself. And in this case, right, this was an auto crop. So around the edges, you're going to actually have stacking artifacts on this one. Well, I, I hope this explained at least at a very basic level how to get your data into WPPP, get it stacked, and get an output. Again, you could spend multiple videos, each of which is at least an hour, going through every single option and what it does in WPPP. At a basic level, throw it all in there. Make sure you have an output directory. Make sure your reference frame is either set to auto or you select it one yourself. And go for it. Please comment, like, and subscribe.